Okay, so I'll start. Hi, I'm Breno Faria. Um, this is a joint talk with my colleague Christoph Goller, but since it's a kind of a short talk, um, I will be doing it my, um, only myself. And he's sitting here in front and he will be available for questions in case you have any. You can come to me, of course, also. Um, I work for Interfind. Interfind is a company that is an Elasticsearch partner. We are uh, specialists for information retrieval and text analytics. We're strongly based on um, open source technologies. We have two Lucene committers on board and um, we're, um, we have high quality linguistic analyzers for most European languages. Um, we have most of our customers are in the German speaking European area. So we are very good at German anal analysis. And um, we also do entity extraction and other information extraction. Um, exactly. I'm the outline for the talk. I will present um, a project that we have going on at Site Online um, since 2010. Um, and um, I'll just talk a bit about the, the beginning of the project, how the, the workflow in the editing office is, and what the requirements are and how we, we try to meet these requirements. So the Zeit Online project, Zeit, for, for those of you that don't know, is a, a very renowned a newspaper in Germany. It was founded in 46, so two years, one year after World War II, and um, it's um, issued weekly. Um, Zeit Online is the, the web um, page of the, the, uh, the, the newspaper. It was um, began, began 96. Um, of course, it's not weekly issued; it's online. <laughs> um, 2010, we had the, we started the project. Um, site came to us and said, "We want to have our whole archive of articles since 46, um, searchable, researchable, and um, tagged with metadata, because we want to link." articles between themselves. So what kind of metadata are we talking about? We're talking about classical named entity extraction. This is a textbook named entity extraction problem. It's, um, I think, rarely, in my experience, it's rare to see projects where people actually do want to extract person locations and organizations. When you have enterprise data, this is rarely what the enterprise um, customers want to extract. But in the case of a newspaper, this is actually interesting. Um, of course, we, um, besides extracting entities, we also extract um, other statistic, statistically relevant keywords, which are not necessarily entities. And um, we do text classification because um, we had to classify the old articles into the new editorial sections that they have. And at the website of Zeit, you can um, browse the keyword archive you can click on the keywords that, um, that, are, that exist and you will get a list of all the articles ever written that mention this keyword or person or location, etc. And the guys at Zeit, um, they have opened this content. There's an API for, for accessing this, um, this archive, which is pretty cool. This is an, a graph that um, you can hardly see. <laughs> I guess, but it's um, a graph of the 250 most mentioned people in the year of 2012. And it's, it, it's not only it's a nice picture, it's also a nice feedback tool for the editors themselves because they can, in, in, a, in a picture, see what they have been writing about in one year and where they might be missing on, right? And they actually do use it as a feedback tool. So how does the... The workflow, how is the workflow in the editorial office? Um, the second step was, of course, after we um, tagged the whole archive and made it searchable, we, um, we, they wanted us to integrate this tagging system into their workflow. So um, the first thing that happens is an article comes about and um, a, a journalist writes an article. We, it's, it gets sent to this robot, which we call tagging service, and it attached tags to this document, and the document ends up in the web page and in the archive. And there's this link between the archive and the robot, and this is an important part of this um, slide. 
because this is the only knowledge that a robot has of the world. This is the only link, only outside knowledge that this robot has. And this is how the, um, the web page, um, or where the, the, the keywords are shown. You see it's just a handful of them. Of course, there are many more in this article, but they're, they're, the user only gets to see a handful. But of course, it's um, not as simple as I just um, explained. Um, if people are going to see these keywords, you cannot rely on a robot to, to extract this content because the site has a reputation to lose. They cannot just let the machine um, publish their, their content without supervision. And um, on the other hand, you can't just um, forget about the machine and let the editors do it completely freely because everyone has their own ideas of what is the content, what, what are the tags of this article I just wrote. And you want to have a bit of a homogenous landscape of keywords. You don't want um, every article of this particular editor to have a particular set of keywords and the other editors they use another set of keywords. So the solution to this problem is to have a curated list of keywords and to let the editor pick a subset of the keywords that are suggested um, for each article. Of course, um, curating this keyword list is extremely expensive, but it's not a thing that we can um, just forget, and we, we, there's no other way to do this because um, the risk is too high. But going through a large list of keyword candidates is also a, something that is expensive. I mean. The journalist writes the, the article, and then the job is done. The journalist doesn't want to go through the list, a huge list of keywords and decide which ones fit. It just wants to get uh, to the next job. And um, that's the problem we, we want to solve, and we are trying to solve in the last months. So the, what's the feedback we got from the, from the journalists? Um, after a few... Yeah, after two years of the system running, we um, had a, again a, a talk with them, and they they like it actually quite a lot. Um, but they have, of course, uh, with the usage of it, they have come to gather feedback. And one of the important feedbacks we got was that on the website, it's more important, it's very important that the keywords are highly relevant. While on the archive, it's important that we have all keywords that are uh, that occur in an archive. In, in an article, because we want to be able to link all possible articles. More concrete feedback, um, just as, as examples. Um, it's important, or they, they want rather to have generic keywords than specific ones. Like if you have Stuxnet and Stuxnet virus on an article, they want Stuxnet to be as a, a keyword and not Stuxnet, Stuxnet virus. Um, also, one um, um, requirement was that it would be very uh, important to them that if PRISM occurs in an article, um, NSA is also a keyword, even if it doesn't occur in the article. So this is a, an expansion of keywords for, um, uh, that, that we, we should do. Um, they don't want to see also stop keywords. Angela Merkel, um, I mean, Zeit is a, a, a serious newspaper. They write a lot about politics and economics, and Angela Merkel is, is a, occurs in almost all articles they write. So they don't want to have Angela Merkel as an entity, as a relevant keyword in all articles they have. Um, they also don't want um, keywords that are, uh, that are out of context. So if there is a, uh, something that is mentioned just um, as a, as a, uh, on the side of the article, some argument that is being made, but it's not actually the core of the article, then this um, shouldn't appear as a keyword. Um, and then also they, they, um, they want that we consider trends as, as um, one kind of, of, of defining relevance. So if um, at some point, a guy named Edward Snowden is, is quoted a lot of times, then he's probably important. We should, um, we should show him as, a, as an entity. And on the archive, of course, on, the, on this side, uh, they want to get everything. 
And of course, um, we shouldn't, um, any changes we do to the system should not mean that the journalists have more work to do. This is, this is a hard requirement. So if we, if we think about the problem of expanding to similar keywords, the first idea we had was just to use um, knowledge bases or thesauri. And this is a no-go because um, they don't want to have an editor curating uh, beside the whitelist also other resources. So the idea is to solve the problem just um, like information retrieval systems have. You provide a ranking. And this is um, what we need, because then you show just the first part of the ranking, the first N keywords. They're the relevant rank, uh, keywords that the journalist has to see and choose from. And um, we still have all other keywords on the bottom of the list, and we can attach them to the document in the archive. So that's what we, we want to do. But a problem, the first problem that, um, that you are confronted with is to compare. How, how do you compare uh, different um, kinds of keywords? What's more important to have um, a person be mentioned three times or a statistical keyword with a score of 0 0.7, whatever this means. So it's hard to compare those stuff. So our idea was to compute TF-IDFs of the tags um, based on the archive. So we simply compute the document hit of each tag. And we can rely on our linguistic analyzers to to um, find other forms of tags that, we've, that we discovered in the, in the document. For example, in, in, in German you have um, this thing that um, probably most of you know, that you can compose words out of other words. And um, in this case, Bundeswirtschaftsminister is this actually the same thing as Bundesminister für Wirtschaft. And with our analyzers, we can find both. So this is, um, this is cool and nice. And we use a Lucene similarity to compute the TF-IDF of each of the tags. So it's, in this case, it's a tag frequency inverse document frequency. And once we have this, we um, can sort. We have a first scoring of the tags. But of course, um, TF-IDF might hurt context. Um, in this example here, so it's a dummy example, of course, um, Schweinsteiger, which is not a politician. He's a football player, a member of the German national team. He's um, probably out of context in this document because he occurs only once and um, although all the other tags are politicians. So, but because Zeit is focused more on politics, he gets a high TF-IDF because he occurs less in the, in the rest of the archive. Okay, so how do we fix that? The idea is to compare the document we're processing with other documents that contain this tag. So we compute the typical context of a tag and it's, these contexts is, is, a, is a kind of a, a document, and um, we compute the distance between the, the document we are processing at, the, at this point with the average document that contains this tag. And it's a, it's a kind of a similarity. Actually, um, the context, what we are comparing is, um, we, we compare the tags that we extracted from a document with the average tags that occur with this um, in all documents that have a mention of this t one particular tag. So this allows us to um, detect that Schweinsteiger um, does not co-occur frequently with the other tags we found, so we can um, either decrease his score or increase the score of the others because we detect that they are occurring in a typical context. And again, this context is um, also gathered from the archive that we have. So there's no other outside knowledge. And the nice thing about this thing, this technique, um, is that we can use the same thing to expand to other tags. So we just need the, the tags that we found in a document. We search for all of them, for, uh, for all co -occur, often co-occurring tags with these, other, with these tags. And then we can just pick the first N that are not um, in our found tag set. And then we have new tags that co occur with, this, with these tags. Okay, but what if um, in this case, in this example, in this dummy example, what if Schweinsteiger is not there incidentally? Maybe it's World Cup time, like we're, we're getting there. Um, in, in our definition, in this problem, a trend is um, a measure of variation of hit counts in our um, archive. In, our, in a specific timestamp. So we can compute these trends quite easily from the archive by counting the different hit counts. 
And then we get something like this. This is the trend for the keyword Schweinsteiger in the year 2010. And um, as you might um, have noticed, there's a huge bump here. Um, this is the World Cup in South Africa. The green line, I think, can you see the green line? Um, it's the first one here. It's almost here. This is when Balak, the former German cap captain, was hurt. And then there was a public discussion who should be the next captain, and Schweinsteiger was one of the most prominent um, ones that should substitute him. And here, starts the, here is the point when the, the World Cup starts, and here is when it ends, and here is the last game of Germany. So you see, we can compute these um, things. It's um, not, not magic. And um, having this trend, we're able to include it also in our scoring. So now we know, um, maybe in this example, that Schweinsteiger, it's World Cup time, and Schweinsteiger was quoted in a document, okay, with lots of politics, maybe they're instrumentalizing him and the World Cup to do politics. That's something you, use very of, uh, you see very often. And um, so this is what we get. At the end, we have these several scores. There are more of them. These are just three I showed. Um, we score each tag, and then we have to somehow combine these scores. And the combination is done by individually scaling them onto a, the same interval so that we can actually compare them. Um, we then multiply them by a weight, each one of them. This is a configurable weight so that you can, um, if you want, you can bias your score to, towards one of these scores. And then you sum up and scale again so that you have a, a nice um, result. And there is, of course, a lot to configure. And there is no such thing as a perfect configuration, <laughs> um, because uh, every person you will ask will say that a different set of tags that should be attached to the article. So, um, and so that's why we decided to, to give this problem to Zeit. And they have the power to configure it, so they can't complain <laughs> if if, it's, if the ranking is not how they they expect. So, um, what what's the summary? Um, I think the important thing is um, that the requirements in such an editorial office are, on a tagging system are really complex. I think this um, also matches with what we heard in the first keynote on technology transfer that, I mean, when you hear in university about uh, entity extraction, you, you never hear about stuff like this. I mean, that the customer would want to have a ranking of keywords, uh, I never heard of it before. Um, so it's it's there's much more work to do than than what you you expect, um, and that there is a, this trade-off between relevance and completeness of text. This is I think intrinsic because uh, I think for a thing to be relevant, it has to be not complete, and for a thing to be complete, you have to include things that are not relevant. This is quite obvious, and you need both uh, at least in this case, and. Um, we can solve it by using ranking. And um, I think the, the nicest thing for, for, for all of this, from all these um, points, and this is the thing that also um, justifies the, the title of the presentation as being a high quality but low maintenance tagging system, is that we don't use any outside resources. We just use the, the archive that keeps growing and we use it to, to, to bootstrap these scores. And there's a lot you can do to enrich tags only by looking at the representative set of documents. Okay, that's, that's it. Thank you. Okay, I think we have time for maybe two questions, two quick questions. There's one here. So, um, one here. Okay, so you decide which one you want to ask then. <laughs> yeah, no. So the, so the first one is very simple. How many keywords do we have? How many keywords? No, yeah, number of approved keywords. Oh, this is a thing that, uh, that is um, on the part of Site Online. Um, I, I would have to ask them. But it's, it's a lot. 100, it's a lot. 100,000? Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you use the query log to inform your your rankings and what queries, etc. No, there's there's no search um, in this in this ranking. 
The ranking is just uh, um, the, the journalist types an article and um, gets a, suggestions, a suggestion of terms that should be used as a metadata. And this, this um, term list, this tag list, is ranked on, on relevance, but this relevance has um, little to do with, with search relevance. It's more of a, of a semantic or contextual relevance. There are lots of criteria, I showed here three of them, um, which define if a keyword is relevant or not. Okay. Hi. Uh, I wanted to ask, at some point you showed that you in fact had the problem of um, uh, finding correlations between tags, like, uh, and so you solved by analyzing the data and uh, checking whether one uh, keyword would be mentioned with other keyword in main documents, no? But mm -hmm. I was wondering, I mean, sometimes you have this problem that uh, um, one, two keywords can uh, come up uh, in the same document when uh, it's about one uh, subject, and uh, but instead uh, a different combination, like uh, A, B can be in this context, but B and C can be on another context. And uh, yeah, the problem is that in this kind of analysis, you basically lose the context. You just uh, compute and uh, trust some distances. And uh, yeah, I don't know, I was wondering whether this was a problem in your case, or if you thought about this or anything. Um, no, I'm, I'm not sure I, I understand what, what you, I mean, I understand that you say that the words can be ambiguous. I guess that's what you said. That um, in one context, if, if a word is, occurs in, uh, co-occurs yeah. with another one, it means something, and if it doesn't, it means something else. Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, of course, this is um, this is a problem, but um, this works quite well actually, um, because you use we use this the one keyword to do a search on the archive, and then we get uh, a set of documents where this word occurs, or similar um, forms of this word occurs, and then we compute the average tags that are present in these documents. So we have, um, if, if you have a word like, like Mars, which is a chocolate bar and a planet, um, you will probably get all documents that have a chocolate bar and a planet. So you, you won't be able to, do, to do, distinguish both. Um, but then unless, unless we would um, use uh, more words or more tags from our document to, to, comp to get the, the score. But we try to keep things simple and it's... Um, uh, I don't think that, that this would make much difference. But it's, it's a nice input, actually. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, again, thank you very much. Okay.